All right, you crazy kids, here's your lecture on pH, pOH, and buffers. We're going to start off with pH and pOH, and you should have probably heard these terms before, or at least you've heard pH before, and it has something to do with like how acidic or how basic something is. We're going to dive into it a little bit deeper than that. To understand it, we first need to realize that water is a weak electrolyte. Now, I know I said it was a non-electrolyte, meaning it doesn't have any ions in solution, but in reality, it has a few ions in solution. How many? Well, we can actually calculate it. But let's first talk about how it could have any ions in solution. Water being an enphoteric species, meaning it can act as an acid or a base, has the ability to transfer a proton between two water molecules. If I do have a proton transfer, I would have the creation of hydroxides and hydronium ions. Therefore, I should have some ions in solution. If we look at these two little Mickey Mouse guys, I can actually show you how that would work as well. All right, the positive part is attracted to the negative part and actually stolen away. And that's the creation of a hydroxide and a hydronium. Now, how many ions do I actually have in solution? If it's a weak electrolyte, I shouldn't have a lot. And it's a known value. It's something we can calculate. The concentration is of hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions in clear water is this value right here. 1.0 times 10 to the negative seventh molarity. Very, very small. There's something called the ionization constant of water, which we're gonna be using in calculations, the KW. And if I multiply my two concentrations, 1.0 times 10 to the negative seventh times 1.0 times 10 to the negative seventh, I get 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th molarity squared. That value allows us to calculate one of the concentrations if I know the other concentration. So that's kind of cool. Now, back to the point of being acidic or basic. pH, you might have you know tested the pH in a pool or heard about pH in a pool or I don't know, talked about pH at some point in time in your life. It has this scale over here, it goes from 0 to 14, right? What's the whole thing about? Well, the whole thing is actually about how many hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions you actually have. If I have more hydrogen ions than I have hydroxide ions, we'll do these little brackets for concentration, we call that acidic. The opposite is also true. If I have a whole bunch of hydroxide ions and not a lot of hydrogen ions, I call that basic. If they're the same, if my hydrogen ions in concentration equal my hydroxide ions in concentration, hopefully you guys realize that would be neutral. So water, pure water, would be neutral because I have the same number of concentrations of each individual ion. How does this lead to pH? Well, pH actually is a calculation of how many hydrogen ions or hydroxide ions you actually have. In your packet, you'll have the pH is the negative log of the concentration of hydrogen ions. And pOH is a negative log of the concentration of hydroxide ions. If we think about pure water, pure water has this accepted value or a constant number of each type of ion, hydrogen ions or hydroxide ions. So I could calculate the pH and pOH of pure water. In my calculator, and you should probably try this, I would take the negative log of 1.0 times 10 to the negative seventh. When I do that, I get a value of 7. So a pH of 7 would be pure water. And that relates to our pH scale over here as a neutral concentration of hydrogen ions compared to hydroxide ions, because they are the same. If I take my pOH of pure water, negative log, 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7th, whoops, 10 to the negative 7th, I also get 7. So if I add my pH and my pOH together, I get a total of 14. So if I have one, I can solve for the other, kind of neat. Very similar to this number up here. If you have one, you, have, you can solve for the other, so that's pretty cool. But this also tells us that that's the total number you could possibly have, or my scale is gonna be from zero to 14. That's why the scale is from zero to 14, it's because of the ionization constant of water. Now, lower than seven, these would be acidic, and higher than seven, these would be basic in terms of pHs. This is the pH scale. This is not the pOH scale. The pOH scale is swept, swept, and that's not a word at all, is swapped, but I'm not even gonna talk about it. I'd rather you guys just think about your pH scale. Historically, when I talk about pOH and pOH, and they both have their own scales and they're in reverse of each other, kids get very confused. Don't worry about that. Just deal with pH, use this scale that I provided, and things will be okay. Now, pH of one versus pH of four. This is a log-based system, or a 10-based system. So if I have a pH of one, and then I go up to two, three, and four, how many times more acidic is the one versus the four? 
is one like four times as acidic? One, two, three, three times acidic? How many more times acidic? The answer is, because it's a 10 base system, every pH value is 10 times as acidic. So between a one and a two, that's 10 times. A two and a three, that's 10 times. A three and a four, that's 10 times as acidic. If I multiply those all together, I have 10 times 10, that should be 100, and then times 10 again, that would be 1,000. So pH of one is 1,000 times as acidic compared to a pH of four. Kind of crazy. Now, we can also work in reverse. So if I have a pH, I should be able to work backwards and find my concentration of hydrogen ions. Here are the formulas to do that. If I take my pH, whatever value it is, 2.3, and I do 10 to the negative 2.3, put it in my calculator, that'll give me my concentration of hydrogen ions. Pretty neat. If I have my pH and I'm looking for my concentration of hydroxide ions, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. And the easiest way you can do it is realize that your pH plus your pOH is gonna equal 14. So if I plug in 2.3 here, plus pOH equals 14, I could solve for my pOH pretty easily, and then I would take 10 to the negative pOH value, and that would give me my concentration of hydroxide ions. All right, you'll have a few practice problems on those, but that is kind of what pH and pOH is all about. Basically, how acidic or basic something is. Pun intended? Maybe? Who knows? Let's look at an actual question. So 2.2 grams of sodium hydroxide is dissolved in 3 liters of water. What is the pH? What color would the solution turn blue litmus paper? All right, I got a bunch of work to do here. The first thing I got to do is convert to moles. Moles is like the thing that you always want to worry about or do first. If you get the number of moles, things generally work out in your favor. So we have sodium, an oxygen, a hydrogen, that's 22.99, 16.00, 1.01. Oh, neat, this is 40 exactly grams per mole. I take my 2.2 grams of sodium hydroxide, I convert this to moles of sodium hydroxide. NaOH, NaOH. And that's going to give me 0.055 moles of NaOH. Now, I need to have a concentration to actually calculate pH. Remember, it's, you know, these little brackets up in here. Uh, so that is going to be molarity. So I'm going to divide my total number of moles by my volume of well, solution, 3.0 liters. That's going to give me 0 0.018333 capital M hydrogen ions. Oh, wait, is that hydrogen ions or hydroxide ions? How would I know? Well, what compound do I actually have here? Sodium hydroxide. That's going to break into sodium ions and hydroxide ions. Ooh, okay. So this isn't hydrogen ions. This would be hydroxide ions. That's pretty important to know. Now, I'm going to calculate pOH first because I have hydroxide ions. pOH is the negative log of my concentration, 0 0.018333. When I plug that, plug that into my calculator, I get my pOH is 1.7367. With sig figs, what does that come out to be? Because now I should round, as I'm going to be changing my function, I have two sig figs, two sig figs, right? two sig figs, two sig figs, so my pOH is 1.7. All right, now that I have my pOH, I can realize that my pH plus my pOH is this magical number of 14, so I can have pH plus my 1.7 is equal to 14. And this 14 is like forever, okay? That's a constant. So don't worry about places where they write a decimal when you do your calculation on this one. Uh, and when I subtract here, my pH comes out to be 12.3. Is that acidic or is that basic? Let's think about our scale. All right, so it looks like it's more than 14. So that's gonna land me up here. If that lands me up there. This is basic. If it's basic, what's it gonna do to blue litmus paper? All right, things that are bases turn blue litmus paper blue, or it stays blue. So my blue litmus paper, well, litmus paper would stay blue. And that's how you answer that question. All right, second half of your lecture is on buffers. Now I wrote a bunch of stuff out here, and this will hopefully help you out. Uh, what is a buffer? A buffer protects against rapid changes in pH. So if I have a beaker here and I add HCl, what would you expect the pH to actually do? Well, the pH would start to drop. You're adding hydrogen ions, so you're making this more acidic. If you're making it more acidic, 
your pH should go lower and lower and lower. Remember, the lower you go, right? The lower you go, the more acidic something is. Now, it would continue to drop as I add, if I, if I continue to add acid rather, it would continue to drop. It would get lower and lower and lower and lower. It would get more and more acidic. If a buffer was present in here, and I'm going to draw two shapes in here, I'm going to draw a star and a square, because a buffer has two components, what's going to actually happen? Well, the buffer would resist change in pH, so it would not become more acidic until the buffer quote-unquote breaks. Now, the analogy I came up with, I don't know why I thought of this, but imagine a buffer similar to an army protecting a castle. The members of the army, the buffer, have the ability to absorb or protect the castle for a while. But eventually, if more and more of the enemy attacks, the army will become overcome and the castle will actually break or fall, meaning the pH would change. So these components, the star and the square, can resist pH change for a while until they basically get used up. And if they get used up, the buffer is gone, and then my pH would start to drop. Because I'm adding an acid, and the lower the pH you have, the more acidic something is. Now, I mentioned it was made up of two components, a weak acid and its conjugate base. All right, let's pretend like the star is my weak acid, and the conjugate base is a square. That's what a buffer is all about. Your blood has a buffer in it, all right? Every single buffer has two components a weak acid, and a salt containing its conjugate base. So I need two parts to a buffer, a weak acid and its conjugate base. It's how buffers work. Let's look at how your blood actually works. So this is the blood buffer. We have carbonic acid, which is created by legit breathing, because you're making, um, you're breathing carbon dioxide, which makes carbonic acid, but that's, that's besides the point. And there's a bunch of water in your system. If you have carbonic acid, you should realize that this is a weak acid. That weak acid, we're going to put a little star next to, because I made a star over here. That's one part of the buffer. The other part of the buffer is its conjugate base. Realize if I were to lose a proton, carbonic acid, would turn into this guy over here, or HCO3 negative, bicarbonate. It's a bicarbonate ion, or hydrogen carbonate ion. All right, it's a polyatomic ion. Those are the two parts of the buffer that's in your system right now, in your blood. Those are the things I care about. Let's think about what's gonna happen if I add sodium hydroxide. Well, hopefully you realize sodium hydroxide is the addition of sodium ions and hydroxide ions. The hydroxide ions are the thing that could change my pH. If I didn't have a buffer, my pH would go up because I'm adding hydroxides. The more hydroxides I have, the higher your pH is gonna be. They're gonna overwhelm the number of hydrogen ions that are in your system. That'd probably be bad for you. You'd probably die. So your body has developed a buffer to absorb those additional hydroxides. Where would they go? Let's think. If I add NaOH, do you think it would react with the weak acid, or do you think it would react with the conjugate base? Considering it's a base, hopefully you realize it would then react with the weak acid. So it's going to react with this component of the buffer, H2CO3. And now we have an acid and a base. An acid and a base makes salt, Na2CO3, and water, H2O. Put a little two here. Okay, so by the addition of a base to my system, I'm actually absorbing these hydroxides by storing them in a water compound and just making salt or sodium carbonate. So I'm not changing the pH because with the addition of hydroxides the weak acid component of the buffer is absorbing those additional hydroxides and making water. That's how it works. Now, the other half of it, if I add hydrochloric acid. If I add hydrochloric acid, what's going to happen here? Well, do you think it's going to react with the weak acid or its conjugate base? Considering it's an acid, hopefully you realize it's going to react with the other component of the buffer or my bicarbonate ion. So I'm going to have my HCl. I'm going to be realizing that I'm not really concerned about the chlorines too much. I'm more concerned about these hydrogen ions. Right? It's going to react with my HCO3 negative. Well, what's it going to make there? What could happen? All right, well, HCl is an erroneous acid. It could donate a proton right to my bicarbonate ion. That means I'm making bicarbonate. And 
I'll have an extra chloride ion left over. Hey, bicarb no, I'm not making bicarbonate, you're making carbonic acid in a chloride ion. Look at that. That's just a weak acid. That doesn't split into ions. So by adding HCl and having the conjugate base available, you're making a weak acid, which is gonna absorb the additional hydrogen ions. All right, they get absorbed, meaning they're not gonna be changing the pH of your blood, meaning you don't die. I'll do another example in class, but that's the whole idea. So there's two parts to a buffer, right? The weak acid and its conjugate base, and they're able to absorb either hydrogen ions or hydroxide ions, so the pH of the system does not change. All right, hopefully that made sense. See you out there.